I'm going to do something a little different this episode. So one of my secrets to happiness, if I truly have any secrets to happiness, is I am able to more or less flip a switch in my head when it comes to whether or not I enjoy something. So let me give you an example. I used to hate gardening. I just absolutely loathed it. And so if I could get any of my kids or even my wife to mow the lawn, let alone weed or build anything in the backyard, then yeah, I was all over that action. But then I decided, you know what, as a homeowner, taking care of your yard, that's pretty much part and parcel with the job. If you just are totally attached to the self-limiting belief that you hate yard work, well, then you're going to hate aspects of being a homeowner. And I didn't want that. So I decided that for my own emotional and mental health, I need to kind of recalibrate my thinking. I needed to find ways to love that which I traditionally did not love. Okay, how did I do this? Well, first of all, you know what? It's not too shabby being outside and to really get out there, breathe the fresh air, use your body. I'm getting old. And whereas in the past I was doing Ironman events, more about that in a moment, now I'm happy just to be able to get outside and move just a little bit. Next, I realized that I really enjoyed the outcome. We all enjoy a beautiful yard, a really well-kept yard. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's aesthetically pleasing. Well, okay, the outcome is always gorgeous, but we always fought, or at least I always fought, against the input, the work that went into it. Well, I told myself this input is what brings about the outcome, and so it helped me enjoy the input, the work, just a little bit more. Furthermore, I've kind of decided that, well, I'm retired. Now, okay, yes, I do work. I have a full-time job as a professor at Salt Lake Community College, and I run Nutshell Brainery, which is a pretty serious business. And so I am busy 60, 70 hours out of the week. But I'm busy doing things that I choose to do. I've decided that I needed to embrace the mindset that I'm retired and that everything I do, including my full-time job, is an act of self-actualization. And by so doing, I'm able to give more of myself, more of my passion, more of my intrinsic energy and worth to my work. I'm not just punching a clock. I'm doing something because I choose to do it. Well, what do retired people do? Well, here's where I'm going to share something with you. I'm a little bit of an Anglophile, meaning I have a real love of England, the UK, that whole culture. I spent time there as a kid growing up. And yeah, okay, it's, it's embarrassing to say, but I'm an Anglophile. Well, I always envisioned English as being gentlemen gardeners. In England, the idea of keeping a garden is actually something that is revered, that's looked upon with a great deal of honor and admiration. It's not work. It's a way that the English gentleman expresses his self through his garden. And so I thought, well, I want to be a gentleman gardener. And so by adopting these and other attitudes, I was able to shift my thinking from I hate yard work to I love yard work. And now I look forward to spring. I revel in the summer and I enjoy the fall. And I just ache during the winter because there's not much for me to do out there. And so I look forward to the first days of spring that I can get out there and get to work. And I've got something to tell you. My yard is beautiful. Okay, it's no Versailles, all right? But wow, this, this 
mind shift of mine, this recalibration has allowed me to really express myself in my garden and create a very, very wonderful living space out there. Okay, so why am I sharing this? Because I'm about to do the same thing when it comes to running. Oh my gosh, running. It's, I hate it. I hate running. So I mentioned earlier that I used to do a lot of Ironman events. I did many, many Ironman events. I've run many marathons. I've, I've ridden centuries. I've done distance, open water swimming, and so forth. So an Ironman is swim, bike, run. It's a triathlon, and it's a 2.4-mile swim, 112-mile bike, and then a marathon, 26.2 miles. Well, I enjoy swimming. I, I, I really get into swimming. I enjoy it. So doing two and a half miles, 2.4 miles of a swim in open water, it's challenging, it's frightening, but it's exciting and exhilarating. I enjoy training for the swim. Biking as well, I really enjoy cycling. And so, yeah, getting out there on a Saturday and doing a long ride of 60, 70, 80 miles to train for a 112-mile bike, I really get into that. But that run, oh my gosh, the run. Ugh. And, you know, when you're doing an Ironman, the run is at the end of the swim and the bike. So you've already swam 2.4 miles, you've biked 112 miles, and now you have to run a freaking marathon. And so it's hard. It's hard. It's painful. It's mentally and emotionally and physically challenging. It's not fun. I have never enjoyed running, even though I've done a lot of it to support my Ironman career, if you will, right? Well, I want to change this. Running is, in fact, the easiest sport or activity to just get up and go do. Cycling, you have to get all geared up. You have to get the bike ready. You have to plan out your meals, and you have to figure out where you're going and so on and so forth. Swimming, you have to head out to a pool or to a lake, and you need to really kind of plan that out. Running, you can just throw on your shoes, head out your door, and start running. So I've decided... I think I might like to give distance running a try, ultra marathons, whatever you call these things. I don't even know enough about them to know what to call it. But remember, I hate running. So I am shifting my attitude. I am going to start training myself, recalibrating my attitudes toward running to, I love it. I just, oh, getting outside, fresh air, moving, alone with your thoughts, the rhythm, the heartbeat, and so forth. And to that end, this last weekend, I picked up a companion. That's right. I got myself a little puppy. I already have Frenchies. We have a couple of Frenchies, and we love our French bulldogs so very, very much. They're wonderful, wonderful dogs. But they can't run. They can't really go distances. They definitely overheat in the heat. Oh, the poor little guys. And so I got myself a healer mix, a little girl named Rosie, and she is going to be my running companion. And she is going to help teach me how much fun and how rewarding and just fulfilling running can be. So there you go. Now, I am very curious. Have you ever had experience kind of recalibrating your attitudes toward an activity? Have you been successful in learning to love something that you used to hate? I would really, truly like to hear about it. And furthermore, I would like to learn what tips and tricks you might have for me, because while I've been somewhat successful in the past, that doesn't mean that I've got it all figured out in by any measure, right? So help me out. Tell me what you have found helpful as you've recalibrated your own attitudes toward things that you have historically resented and turned them into something that you find fulfilling and rewarding. All right, there we go. 
quick one today. Thanks a lot for joining. And until we talk again, have a fantastic day.